Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and welcome to Lecture 3 in Programming for Engineers in Python. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little bit upon our what we've done in Lecture 1 and Lecture 2 and kind of take you to the next level. Um, first off, in Lecture 1 I used Notepad++, and then Lecture 2 I uh, used, uh, I think, uh, the Thani tool, which was a Python tool, which is a very simple tool. But uh, this time around, and, and for the rest of the, uh, this class, we're going to actually do all of our programming inside of the SPIDER IDE, S-P-Y-D-E-R. And um, you should go ahead and find this. Um, SPIDER is actually inside of the Anaconda framework. So I am going to leave it to the students in this class to find Anaconda Python, hint, hint, Google Anaconda Python, and download the Anaconda, Py Anaconda Python and actually start working within the framework. It's a relatively easy framework to do. But one of the beauties of this one is, is I can have my editor here. This is where I set it up, my console down here in the corner. And one of the things that I like to have, which is my Variable Explorer, which is a very useful tool. And as we move, progress on, you're going to see why it's incredibly useful. I like to, pr I like to do this by example because most of programming is going to be you learning what libraries you need to use, making sure that you use the correct syntax and the functions and the correct syntax for the programming and at this point you should have a little bit of Python underneath your belt so this should not be difficult but you are going to learn some new things today and we're going to do this we're going to actually look at um, we're going to do it by coding and we're going to look at the different statements that I uh, put into the program that I've written for you so that you can see some ways to do things first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a relativistic mass calculator and essentially what it's going to do is it's going to apply the equation um, for the relative mass um, based on things that are traveling near the speed of light, which is one of the relative, relativistic equations. Reality is it doesn't matter what equation I use right here. What I want to do is I want to be able to input numbers, put the numbers into an array, do a calculation based on those numbers, and then output that information. That's what I'm going to do, and so that's what we're going to cover here. So the first thing that I've do, done here in my in my uh, program, which is my program right here inside of Spider, I'm going to print out relatively relativistic mass calculator so that you can see that it's a what it is. And in our calculator, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to input an original mass. Now, under the theory of relativity, as you travel closer and closer to the speed of light, your mass increases to infinity. So what we're going to do is we're going to have different of uh, uh, speeds, speeds, and we're going to calculate the mass that you're going to be at those individual speeds. So let's go ahead and go through the program itself. So the first thing I did is I created a variable i that I set to zero, and i is going to be a counter. We're going to use that counter later on, so it's a counter. Then, oh, here's something that's brand new. I put m equals open bracket, close bracket, and then I've got v equals open bracket and close bracket. Well, what that is, is it creates an empty array M and an empty array V. You saw arrays in the last one, but now I'm actually starting off with this empty array. And then I created a variable called C, which is really my continue variable, which I set equal to Y. I do not need that semicolon right there so I can get rid of that. So C equals Y. So um, you're, here's a new thing that you're going to learn. You saw four loops, but now you're going to see a while loop. Don't get lost in this. A while loop is exactly what you might think it is. While C is equal to Y, do everything that's in this little indented section. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. I, by the way, right above that set C equal to Y so that you know the first time around it's going to do what's in here. So now I've got my V. Remember, V is an array, and I put V dot append. Well, append is a function we often call the methods of an array. And it does exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to append a value onto that empty array. And what value is it going to put? Well, I have the float, which is a function which converts a string to a float, that I actually have inside of that the input function, which is going to be an input with a prompt. 
And it's going to go ahead and ask for the velocity as a fraction of c, so it should be a fraction like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. And it's going to take that value from the user, convert it to a float, and then append it to the array v. Then down here, I'm going to take the array m, and I'm going to append a value. And that value is going to be m0, or m0, which by the way, I did up here at the beginning. At the very beginning of here, I actually got that from the user. And I'm going to divide it by the square root of 1 minus v squared. And the way you, you square something is take math, pow, the value that you're doing, and um, to the power. But notice I have this v of i. OK, well, that is the value. But what you saw is that there is a v, an array v. Well, in the first step, I append a number onto it. And i starts as 0. So what you're saying is v of 0 is the thing that you're going to go ahead and use in the calculation. Well, remember, v just appended something onto it. And if it's the very first time it did it, it's going to append it in the spot 0. Then i plus equals 1. Well, that in Python is the increment operator. For those who've used other languages, might be used to the plus plus. There is no plus plus operator in Python. But there is a plus equals 1, which is essentially an operator that adds 1 to whatever i is. So after it does this um, input and does this calculation, it's going to increment the i. Then Remember good old c up here, where c was equal to y? And while c was equal to y, you, you kept going. Well, now I'm going to ask you to input the c value. And if you input a y, it's going to continue, and it's going to go through the while loop again. If you enter anything other than a y, and a lowercase y at that, it's going to jump out and go to the next line, where it, by the way, is going to print now a header, um, which is going to be speed, initial mass, and mass at the speed. And then it goes in, and now you can go back and remember from your last lecture, lecture two, the range operator for j in range. And the range would be where you start 0 and where you end up, which is len of v. Well, len is a function that returns the length of the array v. So this is going to go through this as many times as you've entered values for v. And now I'm showing you a different way to output, and remember I promised you I'd do it, be able to print out formatted output. So in here, I want to print out the values. I'm going to use the percent. So percent point two f says you're going to go ahead and make it a float with two um, decimals, two, two precision of two after the decimal place. And I do that three times because I'm going to do it for all three of them. And then I have a percent operation right here. And then I've got the three variables that are going to go into these three spots. So if I run this, and I'm going to move this over here so that you can see it. If I run this, input original mass. Well, I'm going to make the original mass 100. Enter. OK. Now, input velocity is a fraction of c. Let's do 0.8. Enter. And let's do one more value, y. Enter. And now I'm going to input 0.9. That's velocity is a fraction of c, the speed of light. Enter. And now I don't want to continue. And, and notice, here's my values. 0.8, initial mass 100, okay, and 166.67. That's what you would actually, that would be your mass if you were going 0.8, the speed of light. And if you went 0.9, the speed of light, your mass, if you were 100, whatever it was, pounds, you would now be 229.42 pounds. For you people that are, uh, who, who, I'm just going to be on YouTube, so you people that are physicists, if you're traveling 0.9 the speed of light and you weighed, let's say, 100 pounds to start with, or let's say 100 kilograms, which might be a more practical well, weight, are you actually going to feel that you weigh 229 uh, kilograms, or are you going to be like, oh my god, I am so heavy? Please answer that in the comments. I, you know, I... I'm very curious as to whether you actually feel that weight, or is it something like the theory of relativity? When you're going 0.9c, you don't know that you're going 0.9c 
because of the, the time dilation and all that kind of stuff that actually occurs. You're, that's what theory of relativity tells us is that you might be going 0.9c, but you don't really feel like you're going 0.9. There's nothing special about the way that you feel about it other than the fact that uh, time passes more slowly for you. But for you guys that are doing the programming, uh, hopefully that the program that I showed you was self-explanatory. There's, uh, I'm showing you how to do things, but not everything. You gotta learn to look stuff up. I'm gonna get you past the basics. Look at this program right here, and you should know what everything in that program does and how it works. How do you define an empty array? M equals open bracket, close bracket. How do you append a value onto an array? Right there. Take the name of the array, v dot append. How do you convert a string to a float? There's the float function. How do you input a value from the user? Not, it's not that hard. The while simply does what's in here while that c is equal to y. When I set, when I hit n, C was no longer equal to Y, so it went to the next line, where I printed out the header, and then I did the for loop. And the for loop does whatever it's supposed to do, however many times you tell it to do it. Now, one thing I did not explain in the original explanation is over here, because J goes from 0 to the length of V, and the array is indexed by integers, V of J and M of J, which are both right there and there, the j, m of j are going to be the values that you input over here that are going to have those indexes. The other thing that I wanted to show you right here, which is really kind of nice right here, um, is this variable explorer. Now, I had a and b and c up there. Um, c I do have still up there, but I had an a and b up there. They're not there anymore. They were in a previous program. But notice, this is able, this allows you to, this variable explorer allows you to see the values of variables which is really, really handy. So M, okay, there's the value, the cal first calculated value and the second calculated value. V, there's the 0 0.8 that I entered and the 0 0.9 that I entered. M MO, which is a float, is that. So this, for most of your programming, doing numerical programming is going to be your really useful way of doing that. And here's this beautiful output of I was able to input multiple values, okay, which was nice. If I was like, if I was like, suppose I was running this and I wanted to find out when my mass would be 200 if I started as 100, well, I could input different values. I could say I start with 100, and let's put in 0 0.8, and let's continue, and let's put in 0.85 and continue and put in 0.9 and not continue, I can see that somewhere between 0.85 and 0.9, because I was able to do multiple values in there, okay, I can see that I was getting close to 200. Now, this program is not optimized to do it specifically that. If I wanted to see the values immediately, I wouldn't print out a table at the end. I would simply print out the values inside this while loop. But now you have all the real tools that you need to do very complex calculational programming. So that is exactly what we're going to move into next. This is the lecture that get you kind of off the, I can do some things that are kind of neat that I could easily do in a calculator to now starting to do some real programming. So that's where we're going. Good programming. This is programming for engineers and we're moving on very rapidly from here. You're going to get to do some really interesting stuff as we start moving our way along. Also note that we will be using the spider, uh, the, the spider tool from Anaconda Python from here on out. This will be the tool that you'll really want to use. I still think it's a good idea to be able to program a notepad. I still think it's a good old idea to be able to use simple, lightweight tools like Thonny. Um, but for the heavy stuff that we're going to be doing in our calculational side, this is your tool. Thank you very much. Good programming.